So far we've used planar mapping and cylindrical mapping. We're going to try automatic mapping next. Now automatic mapping tries to do what its name infers, tries to automate the UV layout process. For example, I've reopened the briefcase scene from chapter 5. And this is actually a good example of what happens when you start with a primitive like a cube and then you apply modeling tools but wind up with a UV space that's not really useful. So if we go up to the UV texture editor, we can take a look. UV texture editor. And here we go. Now it looks logical enough right off the bat. However, if you start selecting faces, you'll see that there's some problems. I go into face mode. I can select the side here, and that seems to take up a logical area. However, if I go to the handle and pick one of these side faces of the handle, you'll see that that face is represented by a small line. That means that that particular face has been reduced down to a single edge. In that situation, it would get maybe one pixel when it renders, and that pixel will be streaked across the entire face. Now there are other problems too. If I pick a inner face of this handle, and I dolly back out, you can see that that face takes up the entire UV texture space, because you can see that there's a little orange box that matches the edges of the space. So whereas this face is reduced down to a single edge, this face takes up the entire UV texture space. And again, the side here takes up a more logical area. So that's not good for texturing when you have such a mixture of faces in the UV texture space. So the automatic mapping tool is a good candidate in this situation to at least get the faces oriented in such a way that they don't overlap and they have a decent amount of space so they can be textured. Let's give that a try. I'm going to select this as the object, then go up to Create UVs in the Polygons menu set, and choose Automatic Mapping. I'm just going to use the defaults right now. And there's a result. Now the way it works is Automatic Mapping projects UVs from six different angles. That's why you have six different planes here. And the faces that come closest to a particular plane are the ones that are projected from that angle. So top gets projected from the top, side from the side, and so on. Now one good thing about automatic mapping is it does a really good job about avoiding overlap. So if you dolly in close, you can see that the resulting layout has no overlap, so there's actually little gaps between the faces. Another thing that it does well by default is it tries to keep the relative size of faces intact. In other words, if a face is large on the model compared to another face which is small, that same ratio is kept in the UV texture editor. So for example, the side faces are large here, but the handle faces are small here, which makes sense. Now one big disadvantage of this tool is it tends to lay out the faces in rows and columns to the point where you can't tell what's what. Now I can guess that these large faces are the sides, the large sides. I can also guess that these faces might be the small sides. Maybe this is the bottom. And then perhaps this is part of the handle. But up here, I have no idea where these faces belong. I can assume they're part of the handle, but I'm not sure what part of the handle. Now, this mystery of the resulting layout can make texturing difficult. If you wanted to apply a very specific bitmap with a very specific pattern, you'd have to figure out what face is what. Now, there are ways to export the UV layout. For example, I can go up to Polygon's UV Snapshot and use that tool to take a picture of that 0 to 1 UV texture space and turn it into a JPEG or a TIFF that I can bring into a program like Photoshop. But you still have to figure out what's what. Now one trick for that would be to go into, say, face mode and select some faces and then you can see where they are. So if I select this row of faces up here and then dolly into my model, I'll see those same faces highlighted. But you see they're not really laid out in a fashion that might be logical to you. In other words, those faces are kind of just randomly spread out over the handle. It'd be really hard to predict that's the way it would lay it out. Now this can get even worse on a very complex model or a model that is very irregular in its shape. So automatic mapping is a great time saver, but it also has its disadvantages and that kind of random layout is probably its worst feature. Now you don't have to end with this projection though. IMAC mapping might be good to start with, and then you can move on to other tools or other projections. For example, I can start with automatic mapping and then select a small set of faces, like maybe just all the faces on the handle, and then pick some other projection for that. Or even just say select the faces right here on this very front of the handle. 
and then go up to create UVs and pick some other projection like planar. So in other words, you can apply multiple projections to a single model. You can apply a mapping tool to the entire model or simply apply a mapping tool to a single set of faces. Now I'm going to demonstrate that in a later video. So that'd be one solution. You start with automatic mapping, then move on to other mappings to handle the parts that aren't working so well. Another thing you do is simply use the tools you have inside UV Texture Editor. For example, you could select UVs and move them, or you can use some of the tools that are up here in the Polygons menu set. I want to talk about that in the next video, how to deal with making this projection even better. But for now, I'm going to go back to the tool itself. We'll talk about what you can do to the manipulator once it appears. Now, in fact, the manipulator is still there, and it's still there as history. So I'm going to minimize my UV Texture Editor for a second, pick this as an object, and look in the channel box. Now, among all the history, which includes a lot of modeling history, at the very top is the projection history, and there is Poly Auto Project 1. I can click that, and the handle comes back. Now, you can scale, rotate, and move this projection manipulator to affect the resulting layout. So, for example, if I try to scale this in one direction, you'll see the layout automatically changes. It's always trying to maximize the UV texture space, and it's always trying to avoid overlap, but the layout changes as this manipulator changes size. So, you don't have to live with the default. You can experiment with this to get different layouts. You can also move this if you need to, or rotate it. Now, when you rotate it, be careful because you really want this cube-shaped projection to match your model. In this case, my briefcase is basically a cube shape also, so it makes sense to use the default rotation. However, that's an option. But I'll show you what happens in this situation if I rotate this handle. I'm going to start to get trapezoidal shape projections. Because the projection is at an angle, the resulting sides are at an angle also. So it doesn't really make sense to have a odd rotation for this briefcase, but maybe some of our model does make sense and it's a good option to remember. In case I'm going to go back to the default, I'm just going to control Z to get back to that earlier layout. So at this point, I've saved myself some effort in terms of having to move UVs around by hand. Again, it's not optimal in terms of have these mysterious face layouts for the handle. We're going to talk about how to fix that through the UV texture editor in a later video.